When it comes to power dressing, few characters have done it better than Gordon Gekko. Michael Douglas's role in the 1987 movie Wall Street is one of the finest examples of classic menswear on the big screen and an enthralling watch. In this video, I will show you the suits, shirts, accessories, and jewelry that Gecko uses to create an image of power and success. And I'll give you suggestions on how you could modernize this style and make it your own. To dress Gecko, the movie's costume designer hired Alan Flusser, who is one of the most acknowledged experts on men's style of the last 40 years. Alan Flusser described the look he created for Gecko as elegant fuck you clothing. He said, it's a look that says, I'm so rich and powerful. I can wear clothes this bold and unusual, and you still have to play ball with me. And we're going to see some of the more bold and unusual elements to Gecko's style as we dive deeper right now. Like every financier of the 1980s, the suit was the everyday armor of Gordon Gecko. He wore only the best tailored suits money could buy to assert his status in a world of big fish. In fact, I've read that one fifth of the movie's $16.5 million budget was spent on Gecko's clothes alone, although that does sound a little exorbitant. But what was it about Gecko's suits that made him look so powerful? First, the jackets are very structured with padded shoulders, as was popular in the 1980s. While at the office, he wears mostly classic colors and pinstripes like charcoal and navy. When entertaining at home, he wore a pastel blue double-breasted blazer. So you'll notice that Gecko often chooses double-breasted. Double-breasted is a little more bold and flashy than a single-breasted suit. It certainly takes a level of confidence to wear one. So by wearing double-breasted pretty much all of the time, Gecko is creating a very self-assured image. This insider trader also loves peak lapels, which were very popular at the time. And his pants are double-pleated with a high waist and side adjusters instead of belt loops. These are very classic choices that only a man who is well-educated in menswear would make. If you wanted to dress like Gecko today, you could wear a double-breasted suit with the peak lapels, much like this one from Suit Supply. Or if you want the real deal, Alan Flusser still owns his Manhattan showroom, although I believe he's retired from making suits himself these days. Gordon Gecko has a lot of fun with his shirts, and he only wears a plain white shirt once, I'll explain a little bit why that is later on. So his favorite shirt is by far the contrast collar. The first time we see him, he's got his jacket removed and he's wearing this bold blue shirt with the white spread Winchester collar. In another scene, he's wearing a pink contrast collar shirt, which is even more bold and unusual. Some of his other choices include a blue and white striped shirt with a white collar and this striped shirt that has the stripes going vertically on the collar but horizontally on the body. This is very, very rare to see and pretty much everything in this movie was custom made for Michael Douglas. But this stripe combination goes nicely with the double-breasted suit and it's another way that Gecko signals his individuality. The fit of Gecko's shirts is very relaxed, as was common for the time. So to bring it up to date, I would look for something in a slightly slimmer fit. For example, check out this one by Brooks Brothers, which has the same contrast collar as worn by Gecko, but it has a little stretch in the fabric for a more contemporary fit. I think this makes him look like he's hard at work and it signals his competitiveness and his aggression. Gordon Gecko believed greed is good, and he was certainly greedy when it came to his number of accessories. The signature accessory of Gecko are his suspenders, and he wears many different pairs throughout the movie. But please notice how he never wears clip-on suspenders like you see today. His are attached via buttons sewn into his trousers, which is the more comfortable and classic way to wear them. Like the contrast collar shirts, the suspenders are a way that Gecko signals that he's different from other people. And it's funny how, as his protege, Bud Fox, becomes more successful under Gecko's watch, he also starts wearing suspenders just like his hero. Gecko also wears a lot more jewelry than a man normally would in a business setting. On his wrist, there is an 18 karat yellow gold Santos de Cartier tank watch. The Cartier tank is a beautiful, elegant watch, but to wear it in gold is the most eye-catching and flashy option you could choose. Another important piece of jewelry for Gecko is his signet ring. His is far larger than a normal pinky ring and it has a slightly elongated shape. From what we can infer about his background, I think this was probably something he designed himself rather than a PC inherited. And finally, on his other wrist to the watch, 
he wears a gold chain link bracelet. So there are three pieces of gold on his hands and wrists to catch your attention at any given moment. Probably the most tasteful thing Gecko wears are his ties. In his first scene, he's wearing this burgundy silk tie with a blue medallion motif. This plays off nicely with the subtle blue check of his pants and the blue of his shirt. In this scene, he's wearing the same color palette, but with a striped tie. At other times, he goes for a more subtle option, like this navy polka dot tie, which actually looks plain from a distance. As was common for the era, all of his ties are quite wide. This again adds to this larger than life image of power. If you want to get something authentic to what the character really wore, look on eBay for vintage Hermes ties or other designer ties from the 1980s. Or you could get something a little more contemporary at Brooks Brothers or Suit Supply. Now here's an interesting detail about Gecko. He secures his ties with a gold clip worn at a slight angle. Maybe it's just another way for him to add more bling to his outfits, but I think there's something about the haphazard placement of the tie clip, which says, I'm just too busy to even notice. Maybe you could describe this as a kind of Wall Street spread satura. Most of the time, Gecko uses style to tell others he is bigger and better than them. His contrast collar shirts, suspenders, and power ties grab your attention and add to the character's magnetism. Look at how he dresses, for example, compared to all the other characters in the movie. But Gecko is aware of the message his clothes send, and he knows how to tone things down when necessary. So when he's giving a speech to try and win over a bunch of skeptical shareholders, he wears a conservative suit with a white shirt and a fairly modest tie. So here he's trying to convince the shareholders that he has their best interests at heart. So showing his wealth and power would not be the smartest thing to do. But generally, Gecko dresses like he has something to prove. That might be because he's a new money man competing in an old money world. And even though he's the king of Wall Street, he might feel like he needs to overcompensate for the things that money can't buy. If some of the concepts in this video sounded familiar to you, that might be because there's a lot of overlap between Gordon Gecko's style and the style of Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Both these characters were Wall Street big shots from the same era who used their style to indicate power and success. Both of them love double-breasted suits, suspenders, and contrast collar shirts. But I want to hear from you in the comments. Are you a fan of this 80s style? Or do you think it's a little over the top? Personally, I love this look, although I would tone it down and remove some of the accessories before wearing it myself. Now, if you haven't already, I highly encourage you to check out my video on Patrick Bateman. Not only will I break down his look, but I'll also show you how to make it your own and bring it up to date. So until the next one, guys, thank you as always for watching.